Thanks, Chris, for having me. I hope to have you in stitches by the end of this class. If I don't run out of material or start zigzagging around in an unseemly manner. On some subjects, I may not have a clue, so don't luff at me. That would be tacky. I'll try not to be too long-winded so that we don't run out of time for questions. Hi, I'm Lynn Lewis. My husband, Rich, and I retired in 2011 and moved aboard our 42-foot Valiant sail, Sailboat Fellowship in Anacortes, Washington. We sailed down the West Coast to Mexico and spent time in the Sea of Cortez. During that time, the sewing machine became a very useful and money-saving tool. I learned a lot about designing and sewing custom canvas work, including mainsail cover, sail bags, covers for the binnacle, hatches, gas cans, winches, hatches, splash cover for the dinghy, tethers, net coverings for the, for the shelves when we were underway, mosquito netting for the companionway and all the hatches, cushions, a full boat sun awning, to name a few. And since we've been back, I made a cover for this pontoon boat. Today, I plan to share with you what I found useful and what I learned. We'll take a look at my machine. We'll talk about resources, thread, fabrics, and tools, a few tips and techniques, and we'll end by looking at a sail repair that I recently did. At the end of each section, I'll answer any questions, so if you can hold your questions till then, that would be great. I am by no means an expert. I'm only sharing what I learned. So let's talk about resources. So books. The book that, books that I liked for canvas work was Jim Grant's book, The Complete Canvas Worker's Guide. Karen Leip's book, The Big Book of Boat Canvas. For sail repair, I liked Dan Neary's Sail Repair, Karen Repair, and The Sailmaker's Apprentice. When we were in Anacortes, I was able to take a weekend hands-on sail repair class with Carol Hossey of Port Townsend Sales. That was excellent. And this is the workbook that I took from there. Also, Sailrite. Sailrite has been a great resource for me for anything that I need from for a boat. They sell anything as, as far as uh, sewing machines, uh, every kind of fabric, hardware, tools, fasteners. They have kits for sale and canvas work projects. They will make recommendations uh, for fabric or hardware if you on a specific project that you have. If you're having challenges with your sewing machine, they will um, help you there. They'll give you technical support. They have lots of free videos anywhere from learning to sew to how the sewing machine works to tips and tricks for making your machine run smoothly, uh, sewing techniques, and they have a lot of how to make videos for how to make biminis, covers, cushions, a wide variety of projects. There's also a Facebook Sailrite users group that you can ask to join and people regularly post there uh, what projects they're working on, as well as any challenges they're having. 
Also, other sailors that sew are a great resource for you. Uh, I have found sailors to go out of their way to help and to share anything that they've learned. When Rich and I were in Anacortes, I had made this mainsail cover and I had not yet put the slits in it for the lazy jacks. And one of the other liveaboards came over and walked me through the process of putting them exactly where they needed to go. And that was fabulous. Any questions on resources? So let's talk about fabric materials and tools. So the first thing is Sunbrella fabric. Sunbrella is a color fast acrylic. It is UV resistant and water resistant. And it is the fabric that I used on every project for the outside of the boat. Shelterite. Shelterite is a vinyl coated polyester and I used it for chafe protection. So anywhere that I thought chafe may occur, I backed up my umbrella with Shelterite. I also use Shelterite to back up snaps and common sense fasteners. Then there's Fifertex. Fifertex is an open weave vinyl mesh that allows water and air to flow through it. And it was perfect for my bags, for my jib sheets. Uh, some people also use it for shade fabric, for awnings or windows. This bird here joined us for our overnight passage past Cape Mendocino off of California. And there's Duraskrim. Duraskrim is a patterning fabric. And I like it because you can write on it with Sharpie. It has lines, it doesn't stretch, and it lays like umbrella. Then there's Boat Blanket. Boat Blanket is a thick polyester, and I used it for padding in my bike bag to pad my bike that we tied to the rails. Some people also use boat blanket for fender covers. And then there's your Dacron, your sail fabric. Used a lot of webbing on the boat. I used webbing for jack lines and straps for boat uh, covers and for bags. I also used it for the frame of my full boat sun awning. Thread. Uh, you want to buy a UV resistant polyester thread. Home sewing thread will only last months. Uh, even UV resistant polyester thread will not outlast your canvas, although it will last for many years. Uh, if you want a thread that has a lifetime guarantee and will outlast your canvas, that would be Tenera or Profiline thread. Tenera and Profiline for eight ounces cost $140 versus eight ounces of UV resistant polyester, which is $38. So it's quite a bit of difference. Needles. I use size 16, 18, or 20 mostly. And Sailrite has a handy chart that will help you match your thread to your needle to your fabric. It's really important you get the right size thread and needle to go with your fabric. So if you ever ha are having challenges with your sewing machine, one thing they will tell you, the first thing you should do is to change your needle. So I always have lots available. Seam stick basting tape. There are two different kinds. There's one for sale and one for canvas. And seam stick basting tape is a 
adhesive, a double-sided adhesive that you use to hold fabric in place while you sew it. The catch with seam stick is that it gums up the needle. So what you have to do is stop every little bit and use a silicone lubricant on the needle to keep it from getting gummed up. It works really well, but it takes a lot longer. So what I did to avoid that sometimes is I used these office binder clips and they work great for keeping fabric in place while I sewed it. Also these hair clips. I like the hair clips too. And I didn't have to use the seam stick. So it made it go a lot quicker. For um, marking fabric, I really like soapstone, or I saved uh, slivers of bar soap when it got to the end. That worked real well too. Love my acrylic clear ruler because you can see through it in order to measure things. It makes things more precise. If you have hand sewing to do on board, then you will want a palm. The advantage of a palm is that you have metal to push against with the needle, goes like so. You can push it on that. A lot of times when you're hand sewing, you're pushing through a lot of thickness of fabric. So having something to push the needle through, like a thimble, it's kind of the idea of a thimble, works really well. Fasteners, uh, I used uh, snaps, uh, lift the dot, uh, common sense fasteners really was the one that I probably used the most. Those are the twisty ones, ones that go like this. And you can see here that I backed it up with shelter right. This was a towel that I put one on just so it wouldn't fall off the oven when we were underway. You have to have a special cutting tool and installation tool for common sense fasteners, but they work really great on the bottom of your mainsail cover to undo it quickly and to get it back together quickly. Solace tape. So if you're in a crowded anchorage and it's at night and you can't find your boat, that's a problem. So what you do is you sew some Solace tape, which is a reflective tape to your mainsail cover. And you won't have any problem finding your boat. So what I did here is I sewed the Valiant logo to our mainsail cover, so we never had any doubt which boat was ours. I also sewed Solace tape to our dinghy chaps so that when we were underway in our dinghy at night, the bigger boats wouldn't run us over. My favorite tool of all time is my hot knife. Use a hot knife to cut sumbrella, not scissors. Scissors will fray, or will fray sumbrella, and a hot knife will melt the edge and prevent fraying. You can also use a hot knife on webbing and line on the boat. You need to back your hot knife up. I use this piece of stainless steel. So one tool that I have recently discovered that I don't have is this speedy stitcher. It makes a really nice locking stitch. So I watched Stellwright's video on it. Uh, I think it would be very useful if you didn't have a sewing machine and you had a small project to do. It probably really should be called the slow poke stitcher because it is really slow. 
but it makes a really nice locking stitch. So I think that could come in handy. So there are many choices for fabric and hardware to go with your projects. You'll wanna do your research and decide what's the best thing for your project and your budget. Anybody have any questions? Give it just a minute, Lynn, and let people jump in if they have any. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and just speak up. You. And How do you spell soulless tape? S-O-L-A-S. So I have a question about the cell right sewing machine. Yeah, we're getting over. We're going over there next. Okay. Lynn, Lynn. Sam. What? This is Sam. Hey, um, just a, a note on the uh, speedy stitcher. We used one of those uh, underway across in the Pacific. Now uh, we we ripped out the bottom of a sail, and uh, so set on the deck two people and cool. the whole afternoon and uh, <laughs> it, it, it held for another 2,000 miles. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Excellent. Oh. Good, good story. Hey, Lynn, this is Sally. Um, you've listed a lot of things. Is there any way that you're, you can give us a copy of the presentation or a list of the materials? I had trouble spelling some of them. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll figure out with Chris how to do that. Okay. Thanks much. Okay. Lynn, I, I have a question. This is Mel Birch. What kind of, besides the hot knife, what kind of uh, scissors do you use when you do have to do some cutting? Oh, I didn't do much cutting. Uh, most of I, most of what I did. Anytime you cut some umbrella, you use a hot knife. I, what did I? I don't think I. I can't. I didn't have any special scissors. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, this is Dawn. What What was the name of the mesh fabric that you talked about? Byford Tex. P F I. T E R. Oops. F, sorry, let me try again. P H I F E R T E X. Pfeiffer Tex. Thank you. I have a question. What fabric did you use for your tent over your boat? Huh, that's a good question. I knew somebody would ask me that. <laughs> That fabric I got when I was in Mexico at Home Depot, and I don't know if it even has a name. It was um, a shade fabric that they had in the garden department, and there were other liveaboards in La Paz that were using it, and they said it worked well. It was inexpensive, and that's what I used. Is it similar to a nylon, like a tent fabric? It's similar. It has a lot of uh, airflow through it. Uh, I don't know if you could see from the picture that you could, yeah, let me see, yeah. You can see through it quite a bit. There was quite a bit of airflow. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, we're gonna, we're adapting because we had hoped that we could use Rich's iPhone to look at my machine. So Rich is going to, uh, can you do it? Is my video live? Can you see Rich's video live? Yes. 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 Okay, okay. We're, then we're gonna try Rich's video. We're gonna go over to my machine. So it, uh, one thing you all might want to do is it, if you hover your cursor over Rich's picture, there's a choice to pin the video and that'll put his on top if you are having trouble seeing it. Can you see the machine okay? I can. Okay. 
This is a Cellrite LSC. It runs about $900 to $1,400, depending on the auctions. It weighs better than 60 pounds. It can do zigzag and straight stitch, which is important to have for both canvas and sail. The advantage to zigzag is that it creates a stretchy seam that will distribute stress well along the seam. It can th sew through many layers of canvas. And you see this quarter here? I tape the quarter with, the, with seam stick and the thread goes underneath the quarter, catches underneath so that when I start to sew, I don't get a rat's nest on the bottom of my fabric. I love that because it's so hard to hold your thread when you're first starting to sew because you have so many things you're holding on to. Can, can you do an overhead shot so we can see where you put that quarter? I have not seen that trick. That sounds it's awesome. A, I'll tell you what, it's about at one or two o'clock. And Sailrite, one of their tips, I recently looked at it, They because I got this tip from them. It's on one of their videos. It's about one or two o'clock um, to the needle. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this lever here controls the length of the stitch. And I used a zigzag stitch on the sail repair that I'm gonna show you later. You see here that I marked the length of the stitch with tape so that the, so that the stitch would be uniform throughout my project. I also make note of what size needle is in my machine. I regularly oil and clean my machine. I do a test strip every time I start to sew. Just make sure that I have a good stitch. It's a lot easier to make adjustments to scrap fabric than to have to rip something out. If you have problems, you wanna change your needle. You wanna make sure it's inserted correctly. And if you're having tension problems, you can refer to your owner's manual. And then of course, Sailrite has a lot of videos about tension and making those adjustments. Before you start a project, fill as many bobbins as you, any empty ones as you can, have lots of them available. Make detailed notes on how you did it, what you did, what worked, what didn't work, and include a materials list. It will be invaluable to you in future projects. So one tip I have for you about working with Sunbrella, and let's see if Rich can get, you see here. So with Sunbrella, if you draw a fold to line rather than a fold on line. So I'm folding it to that line. Uh, that makes it much more precise and it's easier. And you can crease umbrella with the handles of scissors. And remember you can hold it in place using seam stick or you can use these office binder clips. So I'm going back to my computer and this is the semi-flat feld seam. And this is the one I used almost exclusively on my projects. Lynn, I'm gonna interrupt real quickly. If folks, if you pinned uh, Rick's iPhone, you might wanna unpin it now. I'm sorry, how do you do that? Oh, unpin, remove pin, gotcha. Everybody good? So this is a semi-flat feld seam. I like it because it's fairly water resistant. 
it's strong and it looks nice. That's the front, that's what you see, and that's the back. And of course, Sailrite has a video to show you how to do this seam and the flat filled seam. Any questions? What's the name of that seam again? It's a semi flat feld. Do you see the diagram, Charlotte? Yes. Okay, good. Anything, anybody have any other questions? Okay, let's talk about sale repair. So it's a good idea to have on board some adhesive back Daycron for emergency sale repair. You can tape the tear immediately and then come back later and zigzag around the edge for a more permanent patch. At the end of each season, it's good practice to examine your sails and look for tears, holes, or broken stitches and do your repairs on the off season. If you want to contest the condition of your thread, you can do what they call the needle test, where you put the needle underneath the thread and pull up. If it breaks and you have UV damage, and you need to replace your thread. So before you start any repair, before you rip out any seams, you want to look closely at how this sail was put together and plan to do it the same way unless your research shows you differently. You should take pictures Make notes, including what order to do things. It's good reference when you're doing the repair and for future projects. You should choose a repair fabric to match the weight of your, of your sail. So if you have a four ounce sail, it should be repaired with four ounce Dacron. You should, up. Oh, okay. You should identify the warp and fill or the grain of the fabric. The warp runs the length of the fabric and fill runs the width. The grain of the sail fabric and the grain of the repair fabric must go the same direction or the sail will stretch differently. You can use your ma a magnifying glass or zoom in with your phone's camera to see the grain clearly. And that's what I did on this picture. This is the sail fabric and the repair fabric that I used and I put them side by side and zoomed in with my camera, with my phone camera. So you can see the grain there. You uh, should choose a, the, a needle and thread that match the weight of your Dacron. Of course, Sailrite has a chart for that. I used a number 16 sharp needle and V69 polyester thread. So let's look at the repair. The sail was from a 12 foot O'Day. And this was the first tear in pat, bat and pocket number one. And the tear in bat, bat and pocket two. And number three. And you can see three was a lot more significant. Let's take a closer look at three. A repair had been done previously on this bat and pocket and a straight stitch was used. You see there at the arrows? That's a straight stitch, not a zigzag stitch. And heavier Dacron fabric was used to make the sail repair. So this weakened the sail, and you can see where it tore when under stress, 
right along the straight stitch. Everybody got that? So let's look at tear number one and tear number two. Now you'll notice that the underlying main cell fabric is torn. So both layers had to be replaced, the main cell fabric and the pocket. This was the case on all the bat, all the pockets, all the battens. So the first thing I did is I ripped out the old pocket and I made an exact pattern from it. Next, I had to replace the fabric underneath, so I cut a piece of Dacron that would be big enough to accommodate the pocket and allow for a double row of zigzag when I attached it to the sail. Next, I attached the new batten pocket to that fabric, the sail patch, with a single row of zigzag. This made up the pocket assembly. Notice the opening edge of the pocket at the very bottom is on an angle. I matched the angle to blend with the leech of the sail. It was not 90 degrees. Next, I attach the entire pocket assembly to the main sail with a double row of zigzag. That's the front of it. And this is the back. So I turned it over and I removed the damaged sail fabric. That's batten pocket one. This is the front of batten pocket two. And this is the back. I turned it over and removed the damaged sail fabric. Any questions on that part of the sail uh, repair? So Lynn, did you use your hot knife to just cut up close to the zigzag? No, I um, did not use a hot knife because Sailrite said that I could use scissors on this four ounce Dacron when I researched it. Because I thought that I would be using a hot knife on the Dacron too also, but um, that I didn't need to, it wasn't fraying. But I did, I sewed it in and then I took a really sharp pair of scissors um, small scissors, and I cut around carefully. They say to don't, do not cut away the damaged fabric until after you've sewn it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Lynn, I have a question about the corners. Um, I thought a sharp corner, 90 degree corner like that would be weak when you attach it to a sail, does it tend to tear at that point? Well, the only way, whoops, went, went too far. The only um, thing I can respond to that is that in uh, Dan Neary's book is where I uh, found the, got the research for making these, the repair on this. And this is exactly how he did a repair for a bat and pocket when the sail had been damaged. Is Great, then I have to read angle. more. Mm -hmm. I have Pardon? To, I'll have to read more and learn more. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is, that's how he suggested to do it. But I think you're wise to pay attention to those kinds of things because that was the problem with the sale in the first, the baton on number three is that um, it had a weakened part of the sale with a straight stitch. Okay, so let's go to bat number three. So this is a pretty significant tear. So first I decided to work to patch this tear. So as you can see, it is 
not, uh, the tear is not 90 degrees from the seam. So I made the repair wide enough to allow for a double row of zigzag. And I used the blue tape to stabilize the tear so that it would lay correctly when I was doing the patch. I attached the patch with a double row of zigzag. And then I turned it over and removed the old sail fabric. Then I went to the leech edge to repair that. I did this next because the batten pocket would be the top layer. I cut a three inch wide piece of Dacron, folded it in half, and sewed it with a single row of zigzag. I made the batten pocket the same way as I did for battens number one and two, and I attached it the same way with a double row of zigzag. And I turned it over and removed the damaged sail. What it looked like. Any questions on that part? So after I received the new battens. Uh, Lynn, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, to back up on the, on the edge, the leech ledge, the, um, why did you only do a single zigzag row? Good, good question. Because Carol Hossey does it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's how she, I, I looked to see how they were repairing leech edges and that's how it always was, was a single row. So, and she didn't explain why she did it that way, but that's what she did is a single row of, of zigzag. That's really interesting because I would think that would take a lot of beating. Yeah, okay. I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> okay. So you notice too, when I'm um, sewing, I mark a lot of things. You see this number three here? I mark all over the sail and it really helps me keep track of where I, what, what side of the sail I'm working on, what one I'm working on so I don't get things all confused. Uh, I find the more I mark things, uh, the just the much easier it is because you've got so many things you're thinking about at the same time that it just makes it easier. And Lynn, do you find it, I see that you're using just blue tape there is, that's very visible, obviously. Is that better than just using like your soap or, you know, soapstone kind of stuff? Oh, um, I use blue tape because um, it comes off easy and it is really visible. And yeah, I use okay. a blue tape for marking. Great, thank you. No, no gummy residue on the fabric. Any other questions? So after I receive, after I get the new battens, what I will do is I'll zigzag where the red X's are and bar tack where the black lines are. Bar tack is when you sew over and over again in one place. And um, so I'll partially close that opening so that the batten pockets will fit in. We're going to go look at the sail now. And um, I'm going to show you what it looks like over on the table. Now this is where you pin my picture again. Can you see it? Give everybody just a minute to uh, okay. get that repinned again on, on the, ours iPhone. Okay, what'll happen is I'll do the zigzag here and the 
fatten will go in like this. And then it'll come down into place like that. So I'm just going to slip it in so you can kind of see the batten pocket. And it slides down into place. So that's the batten pocket repair. One other uh, repair that I'm going to show you that I didn't have to do on this sale, but I think it's a possibility for you, is if you have a hole in your sale, you can do what they call a TV scratch, scratch TV screen patch. So let's say you got a hole right here. So you'd make your patch, you zigzag around the edge, and then you come in and zigzag again closer to the hole. Okay, then you turn it over and you remove the old sail fabric. Pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my computer. Anybody have any questions on uh, the sail repair or anything that I've said? Well, thanks for having me. I hope that this encourages you to, to sew and that you'll try some sail repair. And remember, when you're sailing, you want to keep the pointy side up. But when you're sewing for sailing, you want to keep the pointy side down. <laughs> That's it, Chris. All right. Does anybody have any other questions for Lynn? Lynn, that was great. Oh, well, thanks. This is yeah. Sharma. I thought it was fantastic, but I have a question on the reflective tape. Did you use the strips of tape or did you have pieces of reflective tape? Uh, tape that you used, especially for that very fancy. Oh, it was uh, that size. It's a roll. I bought it in a roll. Okay. Yeah. But it's about five inches. Yeah, this one was about five inches wide. Okay, because I love that you were able to get a pattern out of it. Mm -hmm. so and I, I did piece it some because you, to make the Valiant logo, uh, but it was great. We really, it, it was, it really helped us find our boat in crowded anchorages like in Cabo San Lucas, you know? Well, I think I'm going to use that for my daughter for a reflective vest while she's out walking. Yep, that's good, good, good choice. And thank you. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. Any other questions? Thank you, Lynn. This has been really helpful Hi. to me as well. Well, good. Well, I'm glad. All righty. Thanks, Lynn. We appreciate it. Okay. See you, Val. See you, Chris. Bye. Thanks, Lynn. Great job. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks. Like the quarter, the quarter with Kip was really good. I, 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 I'm frustrated good. from time to time trying to hold everything. So that was All a good right. one. Good. I got, I'm glad you got a takeaway. <laughs> For sure. Good. Thanks, Lynn, from the Dunlaps. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Lynn. Lynn. Really enjoyed that.